Mahalo, North Carolina. And I don't mean to turn my back to you, but I'm kind of stuck with this position here. So I'm talking to you too. Well, I'll tell you what, it's, a, it's good to be home back here in North Carolina. You know, uh, you know, I kind of grew up here. Most of my adult life was here. I spent most of my adult life just down the road in a place I call, still call, and will always call, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Uh, you know, you know it's, it's a place, um, I met my wife, I'm, I married her there. Both my sons were born there. I deployed to war from there. My two sons also deployed to war from there. My son-in-law deployed from there. My daughter deployed and my wife's urgent fury deployed as well. So I think I know service and I know patriotism. And it's, it's really good to be with you today um, at a criti critical uh, time in our life of our nation. You know, not only do I get to be with you today, but I get to be with the 45th and soon to be 47th President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. And, and, and the good news is I'm the last speaker before he speaks, so we're okay as well. But you know, and I'm gonna add yeah, just a little bit of an ad lib on this. You know, I was with him in 2016 during the campaign. And the last week of that campaign, we were just down the road on 95 in Selma, North Carolina. And there were 17,000, that's by the Raleigh News and Observer, there were 17,000 people sitting there. And I remember coming on the backstage and I said, Mr. President, now remember back in 2016, the odds of us winning by the New York Times was 5%, okay? And I said, we are gonna win this sucker. Well, you know, looking at you today and looking at North Carolina today, we're gonna win this sucker in about one way. Okay? But, but let's be honest, this fight for America is not yet over. You know, we need, we need all of you to push as hard as you can for the next six days. And we need you in these final days to bring it home for America, like you brought it home for us in 2016. You know, you hear from a lot of people when they say, you know, this is the most important election of our lifetime. I've heard that all of my life. Well, you're right. This time it is. This is the most important one we'll ever have. Because the choice is stark, not just for America, but for you all as well. And not for just you, but for your children and your grandchildren. It's an easy comparison. It's really easy. Look at the administration in four years of a Trump administration and four years of a Biden-Harris administration. It's a clear choice, success or failure, leadership, leadership avoidance, or courage or one of fear. And this week, remember the, found, the words of one of our founding fathers, Benjamin Franklin. When he was asked at the end of the Constitutional Convention, Mr. Franklin, what did you give us? And he said, we gave you a republic if you can keep it. And that's what we need to do. Mm -hmm. you know, I've, been, I've been a soldier, a paratrooper, served in multiple combat tours for America. I've seen the best and I've seen the worst of man. You know, but I found out something in those combat tours from Vietnam to Panama to Iraq and how you react to being shot. And being hit quickly defines who you are. The type of person that God has put on this earth. Will you fold? Will you become fearful? Will your, will your soul become sap? Will you cower or will you stand with courage? You know, I remember just this summer when President Trump was shot in Butler, Pennsylvania, and standing up, blood streaming down his face, not knowing if there were multiple shooters, and he said to America, fight, fight, fight. That moment defined him. It showed you, and it showed America. It showed the world, the caliber of the leader we all knew, a leader I would always follow and will always follow. And for our final battle, defining who we are as a nation is now just days away. And the outcome of the battle depends on each and every one of you t in this room. This is a battle for the soul of our nation, a battle for the future. This is a campaign of looking forward, of telling our kids, you know, it's okay to think big again. It's okay to believe in great dreams. It's okay to believe in God. It's okay to believe in country. 
And with, and with Elon Musk on board, it's even okay to believe we're going to go to Mars. So do, so do not listen to the rhetoric of the, of the left. To those that tell you our better days are behind us, they're not. We have a leader for you. We have a champion for you, for all of us, in Donald J. Trump. You know, Donald Trump will unite us because he wants us all to dream that this nation can be, as Reagan said, still that shining city on the hill, beckoning to us all that we are, in fact, a very good and very decent nation, but a nation that must be guided by three words that are start our Constitution. We the people. Big dreams, no fear, a new golden age. You know, at the start of this rally, you heard our national anthem sung beautifully. But you, I want to ask you a question. Are you aware that the last words of the first stanza of the national anthem, it's a question. It's a question to all of you. It's a question to all of us. Oh, say, does that. That's the start of a question. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave over the land of the free and the home of the brave? And it's up to you in this room today, in the next few days, to bring it home, to make it so. It's time for you to do what President Trump did in Butler, Pennsylvania, when he rose from being wounded at that rallying as the world held its breath to stand, face the nation, face the world, and give the, give the clarion call to America to fight, fight, fight for this nation. So now for the next five days, as President Trump has fought for you, he's fought for me, he's fought for our children and our grandchildren, it's our time it's our time to fight for him this week and bring it home. And as I said to him years ago in that field in Selma, North Carolina, let's win this sucker. Thank you and God bless America. <laughs>